the mind's a very inconstant thing. Constantly jumping around, changing its mind. Thinking this way, then thinking that way. Making up its mind to do something, then dropping it, running off with something else. If it were a friend, you probably would have given up on that friend a long time ago. But here you are, stuck with it. So what you want to do is to train the mind to be more like a friend, a true friend. And as John Lee points out in one of his Dharma talks, we've got a good friend right here with the body. What causes problems? And aches here and there, hunger and whatever. But there's a certain constancy to the body, the feelings of solidity, warmth, the sense of energy that makes up our sense of the body. That's always there as long as we're alive. So try to learn from this friend. Even when you run away from the breath, the breath is still there. You can always come back to it. And then you find if you stick with it, it sticks with you. And it teaches a lesson in constancy. There's a passage in the text where the Buddha is te teaching Rahula, his son. He said, meditate making the mind like earth, make the mind like water, make the mind like fire, make the mind like wind. In the sense that none of these things are disturbed by beautiful things or ugly things, clean things or disgusting things. And you can throw garbage down on the earth, the earth doesn't shrink away. You throw perfect water on the earth, it doesn't have an effect either. This is a large part of their constancy, is they're imperturbable. And that's a quality you want to develop in the mind. And you find that there is that quality of just knowingness. Then no matter what happens, there's a knowing. Things can come falling down all around you, and there's still that knowing. Our problem is we identify with all the things that can be shaken that can be perturbed. And so in the meditation we're trying to find our way to that spot of unperturbed knowing. Even though it may not be the deathless, it's, it's a good place to be, good, strong equanimity, a good, solid foundation inside. And we're taught a lesson about that property or that element of knowingness by looking at the properties in the body. You've got the earth water, fire, the energy of the breath. These are basic properties that let you know that you've got a body here. And they're always there. Sometimes one may be more predominant than the others, but they're always there all the time. So when you see that the breath is constant, even when it's still, there's an element of sort of still energy that counts as breath as well. When you see that the breath is constant, try to make your mind as constant as the breath. Pick up some habits from it. When things go well, look at the properties in the body. They don't change. When things go poorly, look at the properties of the body, and they're the same. And try to make your mind that solid, that constant, that dependable. This is one of our biggest problems in life, is that we want something we can depend on, and yet we're probably the most undependable feature in our lives. The mind in all of its sudden turns, sudden changes. So we're trying to take this most unreliable part of ourselves and apprentice it to some parts that are a little bit more reliable. 
more solid, more constant, so that it will pick up their habits. It may seem like we're running against the Buddha's teachings. After all, he stresses that we see things as inconstant and stressful and not, not self. And here it seems like we're focusing on making the mind constant so that it has a sense of ease and that it's under our control. Well, only when you develop this, the mind in this direction will you begin to see the really subtle things that the Buddha was teaching about when he was talking about the three characteristics. You can't see what's inconstant unless you make yourself really, really constant. Otherwise, everything seems to be moving. You have no idea what's moving and what's not. And you can't detect subtle stress unless you have a very strong sense of ease. And you really can't know the not-selfness of things unless you try your best to bring them under your control. And you find the extent to which you can control things and where exactly you can't. In other words, you have to fight against the three characteristics if you're really going to see them clearly. But you don't have to think of it as a fight right now. Think of it as learning from your friends. Or of apprenticing yourself to the breath. What does the breath have to teach you? It always comes in, always comes out. Whether you pay attention to it or not, that's what it's doing. It's not looking for your approval, it's just doing what it does. With a certain constancy. So at the very least, try to make your mind as constant as the breath. Stick with it all the way in, all the way out, and then all the way in the next time, all the way out the next time. Don't let there be any gaps. Because it's in the constancy, the consistency, that one, you develop the qualities you really need in the mind, and two, you begin to see things you didn't see before. The things that happened when used to happen when you blinked. Now there's no blinking. It's when the mind can learn to rely on itself in this way that it can that what it sees is really worth seeing and taking to heart.